This is using sheets as a calculator, or I think it's also called an adding machine, the way that we're gonna be using it. Basically what I have is this cell already has a value. I want to be able to write in, for instance, minus 20, hit enter, and instead of showing negative 20, I want it to show 30, 50, minus 20, or divided by five and show 10, or times two and show 100, anything like that. Okay, so let's start with this 50 and go ahead and see how to get there. Taking a look at the script, we're gonna start with a blank on edit script and see how to get to the calculator or adding machine setup. So first thing I'm gonna do is set up a logging. I'm actually going to use an offset rather than the actual logger so that we don't have to keep coming back to the script file. So e.range.offset, so get an offset, get a cell offset from the current cell. We're gonna do zero, so no rows, one column. So basically, in this case, B2. Dot set value, E dot value. Well, let's just start there. So let's do minus 20 as we showed before. Great, we get minus 20 times two divided by five plus 10. Oh no, that's interesting. What is going on here? Why is it showing 10 in B2 and equals 10 in the formula bar rather than plus 10 as it did with everything else, right? Because if we write negative 20, we get negative 20. It's because you can actually start a formula or a function with the plus sign. So if I do plus rand, that will operate as a function. In other words, it always changes. Sheets will take a plus as if it were an equals and change it to an equals. Let's go ahead and avoid those. All right, that's good to know. Let's also go ahead and I wanna get the operator. We're gonna say that the rule is the operator must always be the first value. So e dot value square bracket zero is going to get the first character of the value, which in this case should always be the operator. Negative 20. Oh, it's because it's not seeing it as an edit since negative 20 is already there. Minus 15. We get minus times five times divided by eight. We get divided plus 50. We get an error because since it changed it to an equal sign, an equal sign by itself is not a valid formula, but it's seeing it as a formula. So these are the cases we need to work with. Equals minus times and divide. We're not gonna actually be working directly with plus as an input operator because as we see, that doesn't directly work. So let's actually tie this directly to that cell. If e dot range dot row start not equal to two or e dot range dot column start not equal to one return. Make sure we don't get anything else. Great. Now, because we're working with four distinct operators, I'm going to use the switch statement. E dot value zero. Or better yet, we're actually going to do let operator equals E dot value zero. And then we can do a switch on operator. Save that. Now it's gonna not let me save it right now because I need to actually add the rest of the switch statement. I could use a bunch of if statements, but the switch is going to be much more direct. This is what the switch statement does so here's what the switch statement is supposed to look like. You put in the expression and then go through each case. 
So the switch expression is evaluated once. So it's only going to look at, in our case, operator once, and then look for the matching case or the matching option. So we want, let's wrap that up. Case, and we can actually just do the character equals, right, that's what we're looking for, colon, break. I'm just going to copy this. So that's going to be plus, minus, multiply, divide. Okay, remembering again that the equal sign is going to be the operator output since plus is converted into equals. And then in case it doesn't actually have one of these invalid input, we're going to add a default. Right, as we can see here, there's also a default option in case no match is found. So this is going to be in case one of those operators did not show up. In that case, I want e dot value equals e dot, or actually e dot range dot set value, e dot old value. So if it was improper entry, go ahead and just reset the value of what was already there. That, that's all we're saying. All right. Case equals, or again, addition, we want e.range.setValue to be e.oldValue plus, because here we can use the plus, and I want to do e.value. Let's give that a try. So we have 50. Just make that 50 itself and do plus 20. Whoa, that does not look right because the actual output, the actual e dot value contains the operator. We need to get rid of the operator so that it will actually add these together or subtract them or multiply, whatever that is. We need to actually get rid of that operator in order to perform the addition. Otherwise, we're just dealing with strings. So for that, I'm going to use slice. And yeah, it, it says what it does. It returns a section of a string. So I'm going to be getting everything after the first character. So let's try that again. Uh, let's get that back down to just 50. And let's do plus 10. All right, we're getting closer, but now it's making it a decimal out. I want this to be completely this value. Let's go ahead and force both old value and the new value to be regular numbers with one times and one times. That should fix it for us. Plus 60. There we go. So in order to get here, check the operator, which is e dot value at the first position or the array zero. Do a switch operation on the operator. If it is an equal sign, because Google Sheets automatically converts plus, uh, uh, leading plus sign into an equal sign to start a function. Then we're going to set the value of e dot range. So exactly where the edit occurred, set the value to be the old value plus everything after the first character of the new value. In order to make sure that we're not dealing with strings, we're going to directly cast those into numbers using one times to turn that into the correct number. I'm not doing an integer cast. You could cast this into an integer, but I wanna make sure that you can also do plus 5.5 and also have that work. If I were to cast this into an integer, different things happen with the decimal places, but it won't stay a decimal. All right, so we can basically do the same thing for all of the others. So if it's a minus, a multiply, a divide, 
This one's easy. One minus. Now here, because of order of operations, I want to make sure that it's one times the old value times one times the new value. I don't want it to be one times the old value times one times the new value. That's not going to work for us. So we're just going to wrap those in parentheses so that the order of operations stays together. And same thing here for our division. Because obviously in, in order of operations, whatever's inside the parentheses is going to run before whatever's outside the parentheses. So we're doing one times the old value times one times the new value. Now that should work for all cases. Let's go ahead and make this an easier one. And we can actually go ahead and use the values we just did. So subtract 15.5 to get us down to just 100. Excellent. Now let's multiply that by 2. Perfect. Let's divide that by 50. Wonderful. Let's add to that 5. There we go. Each of our values works. Let's go ahead and delete that error. Each of our values works. Each of our operators works. So the important things to remember here is that Sheets automatically converts a plus symbol into an equal symbol so that it can start a formula. We want to capture that here. Also, we do not want to add, subtract, multiply. I'm just going to say add for simplicity. We do not want to add the entire new value to the old value because the new value contains the operator. So we do dot slice one to get rid of that operator. Finally, to make sure that we are not dealing with strings, but instead dealing with the actual values, we're going to multiply each of our values, the old value and the new value by one in order to make sure that they actually are numbers. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was valuable. Of course, like, subscribe, share, tell others about this, and you can always connect with me at the links below.